Afro-American origins, black Native Americans. The greatest myth about the black Native Americans is that they never existed. This myth has been perpetuated by numerous American films which record the Indian wars with the Apache and Lakota tribes. Whites have created a myth that there were no black Native Americans. They teach that the only black Indians were slaves of the Mongoloid Indians. This is false. There were many black Native American nations when Europeans arrived in America. In fact, blacks have been in America for 100,000 years. Archaeologists have reconstructed the faces of ancient Americans from Brazil and Mexico. These faces are based on the skeletal remains dating back to 12,000 BC. Researchers working on these ancient people Note that they resemble Negroes or Africans instead of contemporary Native Americans. These ancient people are called Paleo-Americans. In the Smithsonian Magazine, Dr. Chatters, who found Naia's skeleton, noted that the small number of early American specimens discovered so far have smaller and shorter faces and longer and narrower skulls than later Native Americans more closely resembling the modern people of Africa, Australia, and the South Pacific. This has led to speculation that perhaps the first Americans and Native Americans came from different homelands, Chattos continues, or migrated from Asia at different stages in their evolution. Here is a picture of Naia. She is clearly Negroid. Black people were were the first to build mounds in the Americas. These black Native Americans built mounds that resembled mounds that were built by black people in Africa. The mounds in the United States may have been built by Africans for defensive purposes, while they tried to coexist with local American Indian populations that lived nearby. This hypothesis is supported by the fact that the Ohio, Indiana, Illinois and Missouri mound sites are located on hilltops overlooking valleys and are clearly defensive works covering many acres with formidable walls of earth, sometimes reinforced by stone, all evidently chosen for their impregnability. In lowland areas where there were probably few inhabitants or unsettled land, the mounds are various geometrical enclosures, octagons, circles, squares, ellipses, these mounds were more likely built without military interventions. Here we can see two artifacts. One artifact is from the African mound built by the Mandingo people, and another is an artifact that comes from an American mound. If you look at these mound artifacts, you can see that they resemble each other because they were built by black Native Americans. The defensive style mounds found in the United States had lines of embankments, which averaged between 5 to 30 feet high, with enclosures hundreds of acres wide. Leading out from many of these enclosures, there often were parallel walls, many miles long, forming great avenues. Leo Viner felt that these mounds resembled the African cities of Luanda in the Congo and the ancient city of Benin. W. Du Bois noted, the mounds of the mound builders were probably replicas of Negro forts in Africa. That this tendency to build forts and stockades proceeded from the Antilles, whence the Arawaks had come in the beginning of the 16th century, is proved by the presence of similar works in Cuba. These are found in the most abandoned and least explored parts of the island, and there can be little doubt that they were locations of fugitive Negro and Indian stockades, precisely such as those that were in use in Africa. Here we can see other mound artifacts. These artifacts clearly show Negro or African people. We also see a mound that was excavated back in the day. We see the various levels and we see how the artifacts, bows and other things were placed in these ancient black Native American mounds. The art from the American mound builders in Brazil indicate the presence of Malian military personnel. Richard Hull and Munyakaye, African Civilization Before the Baturi, noted that, and I quote, 
The Mali Marines wore white caps on their heads and a white tunic on the side of the skull caps worn by the Mali Marines. E. Murphy, History of African Civilization, said the uniform of the Mali military consisted of sandals, loose-fitting cotton breeches reaching down to the knees, a sleeveless tunic, and a white headdress of either cotton or leather, decorated with one or more feathers. Here you see uh, two, uh, two different ancient uh, peoples. You can see that they wear the breeches that were identified as a normal military gear for a Malian Marine. The only occupied mounds seen by Europeans were those built by the African slaves, the Arawak Indians and people in Florida. Hernando de Soto, the only European to see occupied mounds, tells us much about their construction and use. Here you can see some Caribbeans. These are the Carib people, the people who the Europeans met when they first arrived in the New World. Here's another picture of some of the Caribbean people, the Carib. Here we have a Carib woman who is with an, uh, an uh, West African. The Soto and his men discussed the mounds they found among the Florida Indians. Here, as mentioned earlier, lived some African black people. Casota noted that at Ucinta, Florida, the town was of seven or eight houses built of timber and covered with palm leaves. The chief's house stood near the beach, upon a very high mound made by a hand for defense. At the other end of the town was a temple. It is interesting to note that in Florida, one of the major ethnic groups living there was the Yamasi or Jamasi people, which were described as blacks. The mounds in the United States were usually found near rivers. In the Ohio Valley, 10,000 miles have been discovered. In the north of the mound zone begins in western New York and extended along the southern shore of Lake Erie into what is now Michigan, Wisconsin, and or the states of Iowa and Nebraska. In the southern United States, the mounds lined the Gulf of Mexico from Florida to eastern Texas and extended up through the Carolinas and across to the state of Oklahoma. The Spanish called the Native Americans Indians because they were black like the South Indians. Here's a picture of the Caribs, the first people that Columbus and other Europeans made when they, when they sailed in the Caribbean islands. As you will note, these people were black like African Negroes or Sub-Saharan Africans. They have also found many black skeletons of these Indians in the Caribbean. Here we can see an article from Man, a monthly record of anthropological science. This article published in 1939 made it clear that many Negroid or Negro slaves, Negroes, had inhabited the Virgin Islands in pre-Columbian times. That means that these black people were not slaves. These uh, skeletal remains date to pre-Columbian times. So this shows that these black people were in the area, in the Caribbean, before the Europeans arrived. There were many black Native Americans. In North Carolina, there were many black Native Americans, including the Yuchi, the Creek, and the Yamasi. Carolina Indians were painted by many painters, including Philip George Frederick Von Rijk. Sure, Von Rijk, he did many beautiful paintings of these black Native Americans. Some of these black Native Americans belonged to other tribes between the Creek and the Amasi. There were the Sokotan, the Yamacraw. These uh, Indians, in a sense, fought many times the various European powers. But the black Native Americans had many wars, first with the Spanish and later the British colonists. These black Native Americans lived on the Atlantic seaboard from New York all the way down into Florida. These black Native Americans fought bravely for their lands. Some were sold into slavery into the Caribbean, while others were made slaves or identified as Negro freemen in the South. But the black Native Americans, they did not accept with passivity whites taking away their land. The black Native Americans had many wars, first the Spanish and later the British. Black Native Americans have a history of fighting Europeans for independence. 
This is especially true in the Carolinas. Here you can see a map, and on this map we can see many of the uh, the Black Native American and also Mongoloid Native American tribes. Many of these uh, tribes, Mongoloid and Black Native Americans, live side by side. Black Native Americans fought the British. The most important war, or one of the famous wars of these uh, Black Native Americans was the Yamasi War. Here we can see the Yamasi fighting the British. The Yamasi had their shields and their clubs, and some of them even had guns. And they were facing the uh, one of the dominant powers of Europe that during that period, and that was the British. Over here we can see other Indians who have been fighting some of the British. These black Native Americans were made into slaves after they lost the war. Sadly, some of these uh, black Native Americans were even sold into slavery in the Caribbean. As you can see from the Caribs, that uh, there were already black people on many of the uh, islands of the Caribbean. And so when they sold these black Native Americans from the Carolinas to, into uh, slavery in Barbados, Jamaica, and etc., they were being, they were joining other black people who had already existed there for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. Many of these slaves worked on uh, tobacco plantations. Most of the uh, people that were forced to work on the plantation were women. The uh, American uh, planters felt that, that Indian women made good cultivators of tobacco, rice, and indigo. Here we can see an, uh, some Indian slaves, a Mongoloid Indian and a black Native American being sold into slavery. They had created many laws to uh, keep control over the, uh, the uh, black Native Americans and the Negroes. For example, here's a law from South Carolina written in 72, 1722. Be it therefore enacted that all such Spanish Negroes, Indians, Musties, or Mulattoes so important into this province shall pay upon the public receiver for the use of this province a duty of 150 pounds current money of this province. So as you can see, there were many laws to contain and control the uh, black people. Here's another law, and where the importation of Spanish Indians, musties, Negroes, and mulattoes may be of dangerous consequence by noticing, by enticing the slaves belonging to the inhabitants of the province to desert with them to the Spanish settlements near us. So as you can see, they didn't really like to, uh, uh, black Native Americans and African slaves to associate because many African slaves would run away with the black Native American slaves and they would join the Indians and it was hard to get them, you see. So the Europeans tried to do everything they could to keep black people from Africa and black Native Americans from really uh, joining or meeting one another. At first the Europeans identified the black Native Americans as Indians, but over time because the Carolina Indians were predominantly Negroes or blacks, both African and black Native American slaves were called Negroes, especially after the Yamasi War. Why should you use bureaucratic erasure to take away the history and land of the black Native Americans? Black Native Americans who did not migrate to Indian territory or sold into slavery were forced to declare on government records and census that they were free colored. This is bureaucratic erasure because black Native Americans were listed as free colored people, just like black Europeans and freed slaves instead of Indians or Native Americans. This had severe consequences. Because of the Indians were identified as free colored folk, that was like saying that they had never existed as an independent people. That was saying that the black Native Americans never had their own nations. Today, today, many black Native Americans, most Native Americans carry, most Native Americans carry R M173. Here you can see a chart. As you can see, on this uh, chart, that most, most American Native Americans carry RM173. You can find out more about these uh, 
ancient black Native Americans. In uh, David and Hotep's book, the first Americans were Africans. Documented evidence. In this book, David M. Hotep provides considerable information about the black Native Americans. Dr. I also provide uh, information on uh, the black name Native Americans in my book, African Empires in Ancient America. Other books that can provide you more information on these uh, black Native Americans is the history of blacks in America from prehistory to 1877, written by myself, Dr. Clyde Winters, and especially we are not just Africans, the black Native Americans. In this book, I detail the history of blacks in the Americas. And I explain how black people went from dominating North America to becoming, in a sense, erased from history.